How's it going, y'all? Welcome to my podcast production studio. This is the space that I create content, not only for me, but for my clients. Clients will sit down in these beautiful blue chairs. You know, they'll be doing a one-on-one -on -one podcast or they could be doing a Zoom call and looking at the monitors over here at the main station. So this is, there's two spaces in this studio. There's like two general areas. You have your sit down, relax area, you know, where clients come in, or if I'm doing a consultation, I can sit down and, you know, talk to some clients, or if me and my wife just wanna sit down, hang out, watch a movie or TV show, just vibe, we do that there. Then there is the workstation. This is where all the edits, this is where all the content creating stuff happens. This is where I get to review work and all that. So I have a 34 inch LG monitor that has a USB power delivery to a MacBook Pro. And it also has two USB ports in the back of it. And when anything is plugged into the monitor, it's as if it's plugged into my MacBook. So instead of me having five, four different cables plugged into my MacBook or needing a USB hub, my monitor acts as a USB hub, which makes it great. So I have two USB ports in the back of the monitor that's how I'm able to plug my Elgato prompter. This beautiful thing right here that I just got from Elgato a few, um, maybe like a month ago now. And I'm also able to attach my Elgato stream deck that enables me to control things like the, like the lighting in here. I, it, I could turn the lights, the Elgato key lights on with this thing. As far as cameras go, I'm using a Sony a7 IV. And I don't know if you can see it, my Sony camera here, is attached to the ceiling. Well, it's attached to an auto pole and the auto pole is like on the wall. So it's like the span of the entire room, it's like a clothes hanger and I have a light attached to it and Godox VL150. I actually made a podcast production equipment video where I kind of went over all the equipment that I use for podcast production. I wanna see if I could put that video, I don't know if it's up this way or that way. Um, but I'll put that video up there so that y'all can check it out to get more information on the auto pull and the camera setup. So moving on over here, we have the A10 Mini Extreme ISO. This is something that I use to capture all of the video, all the camera angles, all the camera switching and whatnot. So normally when I'm producing podcasts, I flip the monitor. It's looking the opposite way. I'll see if I could superimpose a video to show y'all what I'm talking about. On the desk, I also have a LG 24 inch monitor that way my clients can actually see themselves. I have, as far as mouse and keyboards, I use the LG MX series. For the mouse, I use the MX Master 3. My wife gave it to me as a birthday gift many years ago and it still works. It's, it's phenomenal, it's amazing. And I recently got, maybe like two or three years ago, the MX keyboard. And the MX keyboard, I like it because I actually use two computers in this studio. I have my MacBook and I have a iMac. Now this iMac is a iMac from 2012. It still works and I use it to review work. I use it to edit photos. I use it a lot, live streaming. Anything that I needed to do, I use it. And the MX Master 3 uh, mouse and keyboard, I'm able to use both computers, like simultane not simultaneously, but I can work on one and then after I'm using the iMac, I can switch over to the MacBook. That way it just makes it a lot easier. I don't have like two or three keyboards, one keyboard and mouse to rule them all. So that's that. Now, next to my iMac, I have a NAS system. Now this is something new to my setup. So a NAS stands for a network attached storage. That means that I essentially have my own server. I use the NAS to save uh, client work. I use it to uh, save my own work. I use it to back up my computers. I use it to back up my phones. I also use it as a Plex media server so I can put my own movies, TV shows, YouTube videos on there and then enjoy them anywhere around the world. It's pretty phenomenal what you can do with your own server. And next to the NAS is something entirely new to my setup and that is a Husky workbench. Now the Husky workbench is something that I wanted for a while now simply because of the usability and storing equipment, organizing, 
Um, and overall, just looking cool. I have a really nice uh, blue theme going on here with my, um, you know, podcast area, like my wall. I'm not, really, I'm not really sure if you can see it, but the wall is like, the, it's, it's blue with wood over it. You have your blue chairs. It's just like a subtle hint of blue. And I always, I mean, blue is my favorite color. So I, when I saw this Husky workbench online, I was like, that's actually the same type of blue that I have with my chairs and my walls. So it'd be a perfect fit. It looks really good. It's a nine drawer workbench. It has a power outlet on the side with two USB ports. So this is not just a workbench, but also a tool. So with the workbench, I always wanted a overhead camera rig. That way I can do unboxing, uh, showcasing things and stuff like that. But I did not like the fact that the overhead camera rig would also take up space on my workbench. And I like to work with things. I actually like to build things, like to take things apart. And I knew that I would hate to have an overhead camera rig over my workbench 100% of the time. So that's why I opted to use Elgato's wave arm and drill them to the side of my Husky workbench. That way I'm able to have a overhead camera rig anytime I want to. And when I'm not using it, I just put it away. With the overhead camera rig, it's always supposed to be there because that's really what you should be using it for. I don't have the real estate. This room is not that big. Over here in the sit down area, we have fake plants. You know, you're always gonna have fake plants, a shelf. I have a, a newer light. These are some hair lights, lights that I use to shine the, the top part of my client's head for some more separation. The separation gives it, because the thing is the camera alone could really give like a, you know, a bulk of background. It could give you that blurry background depending on your lens. But when you add a light, it kind of like makes your mind think, oh, this person is further away from the background. They add like a nice little separation. And that's why I like to use hair light for, even if they're wearing hats, it's just something to show you that they're further away from the background. It just looks really cool. Um, and these are really cheap lights I got from eBay back in like 2015, like way before I was doing podcasts, I just had to get these for a video project and they, and they still work. Um, I'm using a feel world light. This light is the main light here. It kind of just, I have it shining up to the ceiling as you can see, and it bounces down, um, to the subject just to fill up the light a little bit more. For a main light, I have the Godox VL 150. It's on a lantern. It just kind of spills light everywhere. And my clients love the look. Um, other lighting that I use is the Elgato key light. I have it behind the room divider. It just is a really nice accent light. Again, giving you more separation from the background. Um, I have these fake plants, like I said, and new addition to the studio space is this GoV RGB light. It's not as bright as I want it to be. I really wish it was a little bit brighter. Let's move this out of the way. I really wish it was a little bit brighter, uh, but it it's fine. Like it's, it's, it's more than fine. Um, another RGB light down there, I have a Young Nuo um, YN360. Again, a light that I got off of OfferUp. Most of these things I've got off of OfferUp. This little table, uh, some of these plants, uh, some of the lights, you know, uh, I got this room divider, which normally costs a hundred bucks. I got for $30, $30 on offer up. Um, and it, it really just sold the room, helped, you know, give it that nice look that I've always wanted. Um, and yeah, this is pretty much it. I mean, I could go into depth about the auto pull how the auto pull, I have my cameras hanging from the ceiling. But other than that, this is the entire room. Uh, one thing, a couple upgrades that I wanna do to the space is actually getting a better computer chair. I want to add more, uh, better lighting and utilizing this space more effectively, get a better desk, uh, kind of organize, do a little bit more cable management. But overall, this is the space, this is it. But before I get going, you're probably wondering, wait, hold on, how were you able to, uh, you know, be moving and talking? Do you have another person in the room with you? 
No, I don't. I'm using the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and I'm using the, the microphone. That way it can actually hear me and see what I'm doing and whatnot and it follows me. And it's been doing pretty good, a pretty banged up job. Um, overall, I'm super happy with the quality. I've been using it for past couple of days on Instagram, posting reels. I think I probably made a few shorts up with it. I just love creating uh, with this thing as a tool. And this space is a tool. I love creating in this space. Uh, that's to me the ultimate, uh, the ultimate thing about my space here. I don't feel limited. Uh, quite literally when I drilled my Husky work, when I drilled my Elgato wave arm to my Husky workbench to make it work for me, it could only work in my space. I'm pretty sure it could work for other people, but it can only work in my space. And that's the thing I love, like my wood wall, my, my room divider, my blue chairs. I have to be extremely inspired and the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 most definitely inspires me to create. It's not mine though. I'm actually loaning it from a friend uh, from Blaze Multimedia, uh, Kamal. Thanks again, brother. Uh, this thing is phenomenal. Uh, I've been using it nonstop ever since I got it. I always wanted to do a tour of my space and it's just been kind of difficult to set up the cameras, but quite literally I'm able to showcase you know, my overhead camera rig and how I'll use it uh, with different shots and whatnot. Um, you know, if I'm working on a video with about a microphone, I can showcase that. So the Osmo Pocket 3 literally is a great tool. And um, yeah, this is, again, a tour of my space. Thanks again for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more. If you have any questions about how I rig anything up, I have a video coming soon about the Elgato prompter. Also, again, I'll be in, posting in the description a list of all the equipment that I mentioned, that I didn't mention, that I forgot to mention. It'll be in the link below. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Peace. This is actually a, uh, a photo that a friend of mine named Kevin drew of me many years ago, way before I had this house in this studio. Uh, he drew me as Barrett from Final Fantasy VII. Look at my initials there, DG, it's pretty awesome. So all of my clients, wh whether they're doing a uh, podcast, consultation, they will see this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty dope. Before we end, I actually want to talk about my Patreon that I just opened up. I'll be posting more behind the scenes stuff, uh, more insights on podcast production, more insight on equipment, stuff that I know, things that I'm actually passionate about, things that I don't really have time to post a video on YouTube. So check it out. Uh, it's link it is in the description. So I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.